Hey there, Maury Curtis Dunbar here. Welcome back to Painted Studios. We are in the middle of the holiday season. It's full force Christmas now. And we're gonna do some fun projects today working with the special sale product of the day. Yes, if you are watching us on a regular basis and you get our emails or you're checking our posts, you'll say, know that today is the second day of our advent calendar sale. So today's special product, hey Terry Jarvis, are Saman water-based stains. Now for those of you who are not familiar with them, we're going to use them through this live so that you become familiar with them and they become as cool a product for you as they are for me. Now I'm gonna go check because I can't remember anything anymore. I'm gonna go check my notes over here, which I did, should have checked before I went live to tell you exactly which, what the discount is that you'll be receiving today. So give me a sec. Okay. It's what I thought it was. All of our Saman water-based stains are 25% off today and today only up until 11.59 tonight. Discount is taken in cart if you when you order online or if you come in and buy it, obviously I take the, the discount off for you. It's a great product. All right, we're gonna swing right into what we're doing. I don't wanna to take too much time out of everybody's day. Okay, so you can see in front of me, I'm gonna pull my, I think I'm gonna to need to pull my iPad up just because we're at such a tight zoom on this. I know I won't be able to read any questions if anybody's asking them, so give me a second to uh, start my um, iPad because you can't do this until you've gone live. That's just how this stuff works. So I just gotta get into Facebook and onto my page and maybe make sure that the volume's turned down so I don't have to listen to myself on echo because quite frankly, hearing myself say most of this stuff once is enough. <laughs> all right, I got the comments on. So if you all are watching, Barb, Barbara Williams, thank you for saying hello. Okay, so here you can see our new wooden cutout is our Christmas stocking. Look how cute this is. It comes in two parts. So we have the topper here and the body here. And what we're going to work on first is the body. I think I'm going to pull this away just a little, raise it up just a little maybe so that you get a more full view of the stocking. I want to make sure you can see as much as possible. You know, all this stuff we do with the tripods and stuff, it's a guess every day. Okay, so this comes in, it's laser cut, so the edges will appear dark. And sometimes on the other side, on the back side, you can see that you have a little bit of singeing. This is totally from the laser cutting. It's not a big deal if you don't like this. A, you can paint this side, or B, you can lightly sand it and all of that goes away. But we're gonna do this side because I don't feel like doing any sanding today. So I'm putting that so you can see it. So the first thing we're going to do, is we're gonna show you the colors that we're working with today. We're gonna to work with Simon Stain in turquoise and azure. So the first thing we're going to do is create a mixture. Where did my little mixing cup go? I had it right here. That's my rolling. Oh, of course it's not right where I set it because that would be too easy since we're live. This will work. I knew I had one nearby. I don't know where the one I brought over. Oh, <laughs> it's behind my iPad. I'm so smart. This is a clean one. This is why I wanted this one. All right, so we're gonna take, some, we're gonna move the wood out of the way so we don't accidentally stain it before we're ready. Now, Simon stain is water-based, need to shake it. And being a water-based stain like this, it is really wonderful to work with, but it has no binders in it. So it either must be top coated or mixed with uh, some sort of other product like an acrylic if you want to have it stain and stay. So I usually recommend top coating, except for how we're going to use it right now. I'm mixing in some of my Vivid Ultra Metallics Multi-Surface surface Acrylic Medium, and it's gloss, into this because I want to create something that when I put another product over it, it won't lift the stain. 
So I'm gonna put a little bit of an acrylic binder in there. That will help lock it down into what we're about to do. And you'll understand in a second why we need to have, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm reaching around looking. I literally put everything on the table and now I can't find any of it. I'm looking for my mixing sticks. Here, well, I'll use one that has blue on it. Use one of these. Okay, so we're gonna use this with a stamping roller and then I wanna put another stain over it. And because these are water-based stains without any binder, if I didn't add some acrylic binder into this when I re-stained over it, it would totally lift all the stain up. That's what happens with most water-based stains. That's why you need to have either an acrylic mixed into it or you have to top coat it, no question. So we're gonna take our roller. Uh, nope, I'm too early for that one still. We're gonna take a paint pan. And then we're going to take a sponge roller. Now I'm gonna put gloves on because this is messy. And just a heads up, we are open for business. So uh, I could have somebody come in. I might have to put this on pause, take care of a customer and then come back. It happens a lot at this time of year. And I'm here all by myself, so until I figure out how to split in half and do two things at once, that's kind of how it has to go. Okay, so I have my sponge roller. We're gonna use our it's, uh, Artsyville stamping rollers. So we're gonna use the Bird of Paradise roller, but we're gonna call it our Partridge in a Pear Tree roller for the day because why not? It's Christmas. I'm taking the stamping sponge part and putting it on the roller frame. I'm going to take my Saman stain that I mixed with the acrylic, pour it in there. We don't need a lot for this project, so clearly I didn't mix a whole lot up, but I do need to make sure that I get the whole roller covered. Otherwise, there will be gaps in the pattern when we apply it. See, I got one little spot there. That's why you put on gloves. You can get in there where the roller doesn't fit and just smear the stuff on. All right, now that I've done that, before I grab anything else and make a big mess, take a piece of cheesecloth, wipe my hands off. Okay, then you take the roller, set it on its end, take it back off, move it to the back opening. Why? Because now we have to put our stamping roller on here. Okay. And it takes a second to do it all without having everything come unstuck. Okay, that's why you need the gloves because you kind of have to grab both the roller and the sponge roller and you need to kind of get it all worked on. All right, the next thing you do then is you preload your roller like you just saw me doing. Don't push hard because if you push super hard, you get big blobs of stain and stuff on here that will transfer onto your surface and not give you a good pattern. So I'm just checking what I did to make sure I didn't glob this up, which I did in a few spots. So I'm just wiping it back quickly. Rolling it over the surface. Okay, we're ready to roll. Now the first thing I always do is test which way my pattern is because you don't want to ruin your thing. This has a specific direction because of the birds. So if you do it on uh, the wrong way, you're going to have your birds upside down. So you want to take your roller on a piece of paper and just check to make sure your pattern's right side up, which it is for me because there's the bottom of my bird. If it was upside down, you know what I do? I just take my roller and do it that way, flip it over because now, it changed the direction of the pattern. All right, let's pull this out. Let me set this to the side for a second. Pull this paper out because I don't want to make a mess of my stocking. I'll throw that piece of paper to the side. We're gonna set this back up on here. Sorry for the waving around. I just, whoops. It's 
Sorry about that. When you move things around, all the camera angles get all squirrely and everything. So, all right, here's our pattern. Here's our, our stocking, I should say. And let's make sure I don't have extra goop on my roller in a way I'm not going to be happy with. Check my direction because I set it down and now I don't remember which way it is. Okay, I've got it. Now, you can push up or you can roll down when it's lying down flat. When it's on a vertical surface, let the weight of the roller carry it for you. So this, I'm just taking and rolling up the leg. And I could leave it like that if I wanted to. And I kind of like that, almost like the idea of doing it in a stripe. So we're going to just take it over here to the toe and roll the pattern down. And look how cute that is. It looks almost like embroidery. All right, so we're gonna set that aside for a moment and let it dry. And I've got my rollers. I got, I'm moving stuff around just so we don't have bad accidents with things. And then while that dries for a few minutes to do the next layer, we're gonna work on the topper. Yay, I love toppers like this. And where did I put my paint? We're gonna paint this one. Set coat true silver. Now I gotta get the jar open, so give me a second. Again, classroom jars get messy. I don't bother to clean them that much anymore. Gotta clean the paint up though that I just gooped everywhere. See, I'm just, I, I'm always just messy, just so you understand that. Um, <laughs> I have friends who are painters and they come out of the day without a drop of paint on them anywhere with perfect manicures. All, not me. I spill stuff. Okay, so we are working with our set coat metallic silver. Now this, these are Usually they're fi either finished grade plywood or they're Baltic birch or something wonderful like that. And they don't tend to pop grain when you paint them. So that's why I don't prime it with anything else. And faux effects is super high bonding. This, the set coat is super high bonding. So it really does work great for these projects. Sorry, there's a piece of crud that got caught on my brush. Probably because I was dipping into the mess on the side of the table with it. And I'm just brushing it in the direction of the grain of the wood. Now, if my grain pops a little after doing this, I'll sand it, because it's gonna need a second coat anyway. Uh, here's another thing about metallics, especially if you're using Fofex, Metal Glow, or any of the Modern Masters metallics. These paints have mica flakes in them that gives it that metallic shimmer. So if you brush this way, then that way, then this way, then that way, you're flipping those particles and you can, even looking at this right now, you can see it almost looks like a stripe I've created. You want to finish your metallic brushing it all in the same direction because that has the metallic particles laying in the same direction and you get a consistent sheen. Um, I know a lot of people get really frustrated when painting metallics, so there are tricks to doing it, uh, and that's one of them. You want all, if, if you're going to paint something and you want it to look smoothly metallic, you need to brush it all in the same direction so all those mica and metallic particles go the same way and reflect the light the same way so that the sheen is consistent instead of looking strangely stripy and uneven. So we're gonna let that sit and dry. And a little miss spot right there. And you just saw me, I went around all the edges. First of all, that cleans up, <laughs> that cleans up any of the side dribbles. And I uh, like to paint the sides of these things when they're dark like this, um, just because I want to not have dark edges on everything. That is not my ultimate goal. And if it's not perfect the first time, I know I've got a second coat coming. All right, so we're gonna set that to the side to dry. Now we're, 
That was good. I just threw it on the floor. I'm a genius. Y'all should be just like me. And yet, I managed not to screw up the paint finish. I don't know how that happened. Brush it back in the other direction. Okay, so slipped right out of my hands, flew right on the floor. I am so smart. I am so just, I know you all want to be like me. <laughs> now, just a reminder, tomorrow's special product that will be on sale will be our... Um, our, uh, resin art pigments for epoxy and we've got some plans for a fun live with using that tomorrow so don't miss out sorry I get all of this stuff I have make sure my hands are dry enough so that if I touch something I don't leave surprises behind and I keep wiping off one spot and depositing it on another yay for me let's take that one out because now that's got goop on both sides that's wet. There's a reason I, uh, clearly there's a reason I keep a stack of paper in front of me because I do make messes. So when I'm trying not to destroy something, I want to make sure <laughs> that uh, I have a clean surface. I'm testing right now to see if the stain is dry enough for me to go do the next level without smearing it. And what I'm doing is taking the palm of my hand because obviously my fingers have paint on them and I'm pushing it on here and seeing if I get any pickup. And I, I'm not, so I think we're ready for the next stage, which is perfect. And we're gonna use our Saman stain in turquoise. And I had, where's my other cup? There we go. We're gonna put a little bit. I want to dust out my cup, make sure there's nothing in it. Working studios, sometimes you find your cups have strange things in it that you have no idea how they got there. And then you think a minute and you're like, oh yeah, I glittered everything yesterday, so there's glitter in the bottom of every cup. All right, so now I am shaking up my turquoise, putting some in a cup. Now, the stuff I mixed with the acrylic before, I cannot pour it back in the bottle because I've just, I've altered it and it's not the same product. So I will store the extra somewhere else in another container and label it. But this is what's so cool about this. Now, I can brush this product on. Just like I'm doing here. And then come back with some cheesecloth, wipe it back without worrying about the fact that I've got a line here because when I come back with more stain, it re-wets this stain and makes the seam line completely disappear. Now I'm brushing with the grain, which is the best way to go for the most penetration of your stain, but it doesn't really matter. Um, unless you're having problems getting it to, to absorb into the wood. I can come back and just, you know, brush it in any direction and then finish it off in the direction of the grain. Oops. Knocking things over. And look how beautifully that stain just penetrated the wood, but we still have that gorgeous, gorgeous birds of paradise or partridge in a pear tree stocking pattern. And we missed a little spot right here on this edge. So I'm just gonna put a little stain there, wipe it back. <laughs> and I'm going to be very truthful. This also washes off your hands really well. Yeah, you can have fingerprint marks and stuff that you need to, you might have to scrub it a couple times to get it off your hands, but um, you're gonna be really, really thrilled how nicely this all cleans up as well as how nicely it absorbs. And I'm, I'm using inexpensive wood here. This is, this is not, you know, Top of the line mahogany and stuff. Imagine how gorgeous this is on wood with a terrific grain. 
but so now we've got this pattern subtly in here and of course there will be more that I do over this and you're gonna love that too all right I see some comments might be popping up so let me take a look uh, let's see thought I saw a question come through but I must admit read that Oh, how do you keep your nail polished? How often do you do them? <laughs> Barb, I do my nails once every seven to 10 days. I do them myself and I buy nail polish strips. Um, boy, that's gonna look bad. These these are Christmas wraps, but you have, they're painted all over. And I get them from Color Street. Uh, Sherry Miller is my Color Street representative who I buy them from. Uh, I started doing my own nails when lockdown happened here because my own nails are so fragile they can't handle all the paint and water. And um, yeah, I taught myself how to do it all and <sighs> Sherry's my dealer, man. <laughs> so look how cute that is. You can still see the bird pattern in there. And let me see if I got another light here to turn on. Yay, there we go. You can see my great bird pattern in there. And, but it's really, really subtle, which is perfect because I want it for a background we're going to be doing more later. And now I've got to set that aside to dry. And we're going to keep, because I'll probably be back to do another live. We're going to keep this one pretty brief today. I'm going to get this down, sorry. I, uh, these mechanical dealings. Now, I'm still working all this out. Every time I get a new way to, to video, it, it, each one has its own learning curve. All right, so we're going to keep this one short. I'll probably be back later working on either this one or something else later. Uh, and so keep an eye out. But if you love this product and you see, we, if you look at us online, paintedstudio.com, we have loads of colors in this. There's We have like 10, 15 colors in this. Um, and we don't have just the standard wood colors. We have turquoise. We have forest. We have raspberry we have navy blue we have some really lovely colors that are not what you normally see for wood stains which is why i love them and why you see them in colors but of course we do have brandy and black and uh, american walnut and a couple of other wood colors of course i can't remember them because they're not right in front of me but we have loads of colors in this really super friendly user-friendly product um, and if you have, of course, any questions on the product, post below. If I don't answer them while we're doing a live, I come back and answer them later. And I'll probably be on again later today. So everybody have a wonderful day. I'm going to go wash my hands and I'll talk to you all later. Thanks.